Greetings and welcome back to my channel, Queen Tasha TV. In my last adventure video, I arrived on my birthday at Moorfield Campground in Mesa Verde National Park and celebrated with my traditional crab leg dinner. Make sure you check out that video linked in the description below. In today's video, I shared my adventures exploring the park and going on my first real hike into the mountains. The first part of this adventure is a driving tour up the mountain to check out various outlook points. You will hear me both say Mesa and Mesa Verde throughout this video. I'm told both are correct, but here at the park they call it Mesa Verde. I'm not going to do too much of a history lesson, but I will share a few tidbits I learned along the way. If you're interested in knowing more about the history of the park and the Pueblo people who inhabited the land, please check out the link below. The Montezuma Valley and Mesa Verde was the land of the ancestral Pueblo people from 600 to 1280 AD. More than 35,000 natives inhabited this land and approximately 24,000 of them lived in the Montezuma Valley, which means most of them were lowland dwellers and only a few of them were cliff dwellers. The next stop up the mountain was Park Point Overlook. Here you will find out more on how since 1906 when the park opened, nearly 70% of the park has been destroyed by wildfires. Also, Mesa Verde, when first opened, was recognized as one of the grandest views in the country. But now, due to air pollution, the sky is very hazy and hard to see the views that were once seen on this mountaintop. But at night, because there is no large communities with lights nearby, you get the best view of the stars for all of my stargazers out there. like silvery. I think it's just from being burnt so many times. You just like wake it up. Next I headed down Chapin Mesa to check out the only things open in the park. The Mesa Loop, self-driving tour, and the petroglyph hiking trail. The early dwellings were built on top of the Mesa called pit houses. The pit houses found here were all part of a community where they built structures, grew food, hunted animals, and gathered wild plants together. It's like, are you filming me? No pictures. They later started to build what's called kivas which are deeper than pit houses with more architectural function like fire pits and ventilation. Both structures were enclosed with wood, sticks, and mud plaster.
And you see over time, their design got more refined and upgraded. The Sun Temple is still a mystery on the function of its architectural design and its main purposes, as there is no evidence it was used as a house dwelling. It is believed that it had been used for social gatherings, rituals, and celestial observation. Eventually, the Puebloan people moved from the top of the mesa to the cliffs and created cliff palaces. They went from pit houses to palaces. Now that's what I call an upgrade. You can see the little, little cliff dwelling. Look, I can see. Oh my gosh. Look, you can see. Oh, you can see what they see on the other side. Let me. This is what I came here to see. These cliff, cliff palaces, y'all. I'm keeping this in mind for architect um, ideas for when I build my Earthship homestead neighborhood community. I don't have to party to have fun you see i got different hobbies and that's all i need some say life is boring but i disagree i wake up and live my dream someday soon i'm gonna make it YouTube so I am doing 
a hike in Mesa Verde and I am solo dolo but it's like a, a path trail I'm sure there's cameras <laughs> and if there's not like there's rangers and shit coming up and down these things we good but it's just like a windy little trail down this little ravine thing and I'm about to get my buns right even more <laughs> after that glute challenge about to lift even more going up and down this thing let me show you this shit bro Look at this shit. Shit, stop. We're about to go down into the mountain. <laughs> This is super cool, yo. Wait, which way do you go? You go down? Is this a way? I think it's a way. <laughs> Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> it was either down or up. I chose up. I just want to dance with you. Been in that burn, I'm not getting out. Yeah, yeah. Look at that shit. Yes, I can. There we go. We'll figure out how to get through this shit. I'm sure a couple people fell off the cliff and died in the process. But then, after so much foot traffic, created this path. 
that we are taking because maybe they move some stones out the way, lay some stones in a way. I created this little dugout trail. It's super awesome. Well, I'm super grateful. So I'm coming to the end of this hike and yo, know, I've never done a hike like that and it was so fucking dope like climbing up rocks and just doing all kind of adventurous stuff. I'm so grateful to be here like I don't want to cry but this is so awesome. Best of our day. That's what I came here to do. And I can officially mark this off my bucket list. Just kidding. I thought we were done, but we went. We went to a nice gravel trail for a little bit. Now we are on these rocks. And but we can see the bottom side of the hiked a mountain y'all I don't think I've ever hiked a mountain like this before <laughs> this is so So I am leaving Mesa Verde National Park. I was camped here for two days and I am leaving southwest Colorado to head east 
to Colorado Springs. So I have a couple more stops before I get there, but that was it for my adventures on this side of Colorado. And it was great and I'll definitely be back. Thank you for coming along my adventures through Mesa Verde National Park. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Peace and blessings. I'm out.